Well, hey there, fellas. Hugh Halter, excited to get started again. Um, you'll be getting a few videos from this new spot I'm in. It's uh, the latest Airbnb fix and flip by the Halter Man. And um, hopefully this will be about a two month deal. Already been going terrible um, as they always do, but uh, they seem to always be a blessing as well. So. I don't know what you're into this week, this month, this last year, coming out of the summer, but um, this is what I'm into. Also, super stoked to get going on these I Am statements of Jesus. Um, I always tell folks, probably like the number one thing, the, the most important thing that you can figure out in your life that will literally affect the practical, you know, success, ease, um, you know, what is and ends up being your legacy. Like if there's one thing that will actually determine what your life ends up being, the story of your life, it's what you really believe about Jesus, who he is. So when he is bringing up all these statements about actually who he knows he is, um, we should be paying attention. Great word by Caleb last week. And uh, super excited to, to kind of go through this with you. We are in John chapter 10, verse 7. And it's all, it's all in the context of uh, a, sh a shepherd and sheep. So keep that in mind. Next week, I'm going to do this, the next one, which is I am a good shepherd or I am the good shepherd. Um, this week, it's uh, about the door to the sheep pen. So let me read it. It says, so Jesus went over it again. I speak to you eternal truth. I am the gate of the flock or the door, as many translations say. All those who broke in before me are thieves who come to steal but the sheep never listen to them. I am the gateway to enter through me is to experience life, freedom, and satisfaction. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. So that's the passage today. And in this, he is talking about being the door or being the gate. And I'll get, just give you a real simple background to that in a minute. But I want to first tell you a story. Um, this last week, I actually sent Caleb some video of this, but uh, every Wednesday night I go to this little local bar in a town called Grafton, about 10 minutes away. Um, it's like a little river town. Most people just go there to party, so there's a bunch of uh, biker bars. Um, that's about it. Uh, nothing really good to eat, but lots of people all the time. And I've always found it helpful whenever I'm studying, actually, to be out with people. I don't, I don't know why uh, other people like to be in quiet and peace, but uh, I love to be out with people when I'm studying in the Word. Um, and on this particular occasion, it was very poignant to what we're talking about because over the last probably two years of going there, I've really gotten to know the locals. And um, usually Wednesday nights, there are this couple that sit down at the very end of the bar, and it's a husband and wife. Uh, and they're outspoken about their abusiveness to each other physically, but they just get hammered every night and uh, usually say inappropriate things. I've had to remove the gentleman a few times from the bar uh, for saying uh, rude things to the barmaid. And uh, so uh, he knows me really well. He, I think he likes me, but when he gets uh, a little bit over the top, which is every time, uh, it goes bad. And then his wife usually gives me a hug, thanks me for saving their marriage one more week. So that's that couple. There's another guy named uh, Jim. Jim comes in every night at 10 o'clock. And uh, they they actually have a special glass for Jim. They put it up on the bar and they pour him a Miller Lite and then they give him an extra one. So he has two Miller Lights. And Jim told me that he's been coming down there for 35 years and his wife has never known that he's there. So he waits till she's in bed and then walks down the hill and has a couple Miller lights. But uh, just, I could go on and on. There's uh, there's Joe, who's a, a local, he runs a, kind of a horse riding deal. And I, I heard Joe one time brought a horse actually into the saloon and uh, made a name for himself there in the little town of Grafton. But all these incredible stories of real people like, these are, I don't know how to describe, it's kind of like a Southern New Orleans feel with um, a good dose of redneck in it. Um, so, you know, whatever comes to mind, but a lot of cut off white t-shirts, uh, denim, uh, you know, old denim, lots of holes, uh, a lot of bandanas, you know what I'm saying? So 
Anyway, um, but the other night I was just kind of looking at them reading this passage and I, I got a little bit misty because this is a story in scripture where Jesus is trying to let us know what his heart is for us and for people. If you remember, there's another passage where Jesus is, he's just walking around and he sees a large group of people like this. And he says, uh, man, they look like they're a big flock of sheep without a shepherd. And he, and he weeps over them. Um, but that's how he kind of views people. Like, um, and it's not just, you know, this passage could definitely be in context of salvation, that Jesus is saying, I'm the only door to salvation. For sure, that's true. But I think when Jesus is looking at people, he's actually thinking more about the abundant life, about what he calls the kingdom of heaven. So we've talked a lot about this that Jesus didn't just come to do this stuff so that we go to heaven someday. He's trying to help bring the heavenly ways back down here into our lives. And so um, when he looks at people, or, you know, I think about all these people, even this couple that every every night show up as a married couple to get drunk, to forget the misery of their own marriage, that they beat on each other all the time. It's really, it, it's not pathetic. It's just sad. It's a sad story. And when you get to know people and their personalities, you tend to like, you just want more for them. Um, and I think when we, when we hear this passage of Jesus talking about being the door, I want you to not think just salvific type of things uh, after life. I want you to think God's heart for you now. And, and the question that we're going to pose at the end is, do we still need somebody to guard us, to protect us? Because a couple notes on sheep and sheep pens. This will make this a little bit more colorful. Um, in the ancient world, most people reading this or hearing Jesus would have completely understood the context. You've got, um, everybody's got sheep, right? Everybody. And so if you're in a city, so picture an old west town, you bring your sheep in for the day and everybody else does, you would put them in a common sort of city sheep pen. And then the shepherds would come in, in the morning and uh, the person running kind of the yard would let the shepherds in and they would simply go in and make that unique call. And out of thousands of sheep, their their sheep would come to them because they would recognize the call of their shepherd. And so, um, you know, so get that context is that Jesus is eventually next week, he's going to talk about how we know his voice. But for right now, I just want you to think about the heart of the shepherd that goes to get his sheep. And uh, the scripture talk about God's love for his own, that, that he never loses any, um, that he, he'll leave the 99 to go find the one sheep that's out there by himself, that God's always pursuing his sheep. It's, it really is a love passage. And then uh, if they're not in the city, they're out in the country and they're out in the wilderness by themselves. And so the sheep pen in that setting would be, usually they would make like rock um, walls, if you will, and there might be out in, a, in an area in Judea, whatever, there might be a hundred of these that have been made up. And so a shepherd might be walking out with a sheep and notices that that sheep pen is not being used. And so that's where we're going to hold up tonight. Um, but the only thing that's unique about that, unlike the, the city sheep pen, is that in the city sheep pen, there would be a big gate and there would be uh, the primary shepherd that would guard the gate. But out in the wilderness, the shepherd would have to actually lay down and he would be the door. Um, so that's that's why this passage where he says, I am the door. He's saying, I am the way into the sheepfold, which is really a, an understanding of the church. So when Jesus talks about sheep, it's us. The sheepfold would be his church. So he's saying, I'm the only way into the church. Um, and, and, you know, and we'll talk about that, you know, you know, you know throughout this year. Um, so Jesus is not a door. He's the door. He's not just one of the options. He's literally the only way. Um, to salvation is what he says, okay? Um, but it's not just a salvific thing that Jesus lays down at night. He gets all the sheep in, and then he lays there. And he's laying there because he knows that there's wolves. And in, in these passages, the wolves are generally two things. It's either religious people that are coming to put the law upon people again. So if you ever grew up in a very religious setting where you felt like the legalism was strangling you, um, to Jesus, that would have been a thief. But there's also a satanic, demonic uh, reference here that there are wolves that are outside and they're trying to eat, kill, and destroy. They're trying to take stuff from you. And so when Jesus is saying, look, guys, I've got you all in my sheep pen. I gather you in. 
because I care for you. I don't want you to be like all those other sheep that don't have a shepherd. I want you to have this very unique experience that you have somebody that's overseeing and watching over your life. And then I'm going to gather you in. You're going to be a part of my people and my church. And where I'm, where I'm guarding the door, because I am the door, uh, you're not going to get any of that legalism, none of that religious stuff anymore. And you're not going to, and you're going to be protected from the enemy. Um, and so to me, I just feel love in this. I feel like when I look at the people at the bar, I want that for all of them. I want them all to know Jesus and find his hope for their afterlife for sure. But I also want them to find, like I want this couple not to beat on each other anymore. I want them to not have to need alcohol to forget how miserable their lives are. And that's the point of this. And so guys, like just in this week, I want you to think about a couple things. I want you to think about whether or not you, f you feel like you need to be protected anymore. Um, I know that you look around in the world and you see all sorts of people and they, you know, sheep, uh, interestingly, do not have a natural homing instinct. Um, so they're not, they just don't naturally look for the right or the safe place. It's uh, maybe that's how some of you guys have felt in your life. It's hard for you to find Jesus, hard for you to find um, protection, but it's always there. Uh, you don't have to look far. <laughs> you know, he's, he's like, he, he's always going to pursue you. He's always going to provide a door in to safety. But I do notice this, that when we do well in life, we oftentimes think that we're the ones that have made our life well. And when you talk to 50 year olds and you go, do you still feel like you need protection? Most would just naturally say, no, I feel like I got everything covered. And I'm doing fine. But I want to pose that question to you this week. Um, are you sure you're okay? Are you sure that you can make it on your own? I think about even this Airbnb flip. And I've learned for sure that the devil is in the details, right? So if I'm looking at a property and I don't pay close attention to the undercarriage or the bones of the building, if I miss a leak in a uh, at the end of a gutter that's been going into the house for the last... 30 years, like I found on this one, that that becomes something that like literally will, will take and steal from me. It's going to take my money. It's going to take my time. So the devil is in the details, but I want you to remember this too. Jesus is in the details. So uh, in our lives, we're, we're making business deals. We're making sales. We're trying to uh, plan for retirement or for a way to bless our children or whatever it might be. Like it could literally be anything. And you might, as you go on in your faith, just think that Jesus does this kind of nebulous, neutral oversight over us to make sure nothing big or bad happens. But I want you to know that I have learned that Jesus is in the details. The protection of our lives is actually in the day to day. And so the story of Jesus being the door, that's not a monthly thing that he gathers the sheep to protect us. Um, it's every night. So whenever it gets dark, Jesus gathers the sheep and he protects them. So it's a daily protection. And so I think about, you know, in my day today, I've got this house I'm working on. I need Jesus to be in the details. I need him to give me unique wisdom and insight. I need him to help me. Uh, I had to pick between two HVAC guys today. And um, I have no idea. Both of their bids were about the same. But I've learned that some tradesmen can be shysters and not be that good at what they do. And it costs you. So I ask Jesus every day for help in every single thing I'm doing. And when those two guys left this morning, I stop and I, I don't just try to pick them. I say, God, I invite you into this. I know you're trying to bring abundance and blessing and peace and green pasture. And so I invite you to help me pick which one of these guys needs the work the most. Uh, which one of these guys can do the best work for me because um, we're going to offer this house um, obviously as an Airbnb but also tends to house people that need homes uh, in short term that's what we do in our community so you know there's a lot of little details even about who I bless in this thing so in every single thing I've learned I need protection um, Hugh Halter left in his own devices at the age of 57 I am no smarter than I was when I was 20. I might be a little bit wiser, but I can easily make the wrong call hour after hour. And so th there's this, um, you know, when you when you view Jesus as literally the door to your entire life, um, it's the invitation to abide. 
you abide in me and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be granted. So to me, this is such a beautiful passage. Um, it's not just the door to salvation. It's the door to abundant, uh, more peaceable living, um, a greater sense of his presence. So uh, consider that this week, guys. Do you still need somebody to protect you? And uh, we'll have a few other questions for you. So love you guys. Can't wait for next week. Peace out.